how are you? You know how I like to finish my projects off with the cherry on the top? Well, today I have the top with the cherries. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm so funny. I better stick to crafting. Farmer's markets filled with orchard apples are first sign of fall coming, at least here in the Northeast. In this video, I sh wanna share with you a couple fun and inexpensive ideas how to decorate with apples. Are you ready? Let's get started. When I saw this sign at the Dollar Tree, I was in such a shock. I'm like, wow, is this really a $1 sign? Unbelievable, farm fresh, vintage looking sign for just $1. This is so beautiful and special. Must be one of my favorites of the year, seriously. So uh, here it is. Let's make something beautiful. I hope you guys can find it. And I think you shouldn't have problems because they just putting out the fall stuff and it just came into my store too. I also picked up $1 willow wreath and three bushels of mini pomegranates. And this is another item I am just crazy about. Look how cute are these little things. I mean, I cannot believe they're just $1. And those little pomegranates remind me of uh, little apples. And I thought that would be perfect to go with our sign. And then I picked up two bushels of these hops. Uh, just beautiful green color. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not ready for the fall colors yet. So I thought this green will be perfect. Of course, if you're going to be doing the wreath later on, you want to get some fall uh, leaves. Here I'm just getting greenery, a lot of greens, and then ribbons too. As usual, I am showing you everything, and here's my thinking process. Putting the sign on the side, and then everything else on the opposite side. Bow in the middle. And then fruits on both sides. What are you thinking? I am thinking this is cute, but you can also do the sign in the middle and the leaves and fruits all around. It's your choice, guys. So here I am cutting everything to separate and I want to show you a trick with these leaves. I'm cutting the branch in two halves and uh, to have um, the double leaves. You see something like this? You cut it in half and you have a little stem with two leaves. These are perfect like apple leaves for me. <laughs> uh, so some of them come single. Uh, but, but when you see a branch with a double, you're going to know how to cut it. You see, just like that. Cut it separately. And when you cut all the hubs, you notice that the leaves are all the way at the bottom. So make sure you push all of them up. Next, we are going to uh, attach the sign to the reef. And my subscribers already know how to do this, but let me quickly explain. We mark dots where the sign needs to be attached. And then we put a lot of hot glue in those places. Submerge the floral wire. And then cover it with a piece of ribbon like a band-aid. And that will create a very good ties for us. Then we simply twist the wires and the sign gets securely attached to the reef. Now we can start adding the greenery. And I like to attach some at the top because look it creates like real apple leaves right the sign is like apple shape and these are the leaves at the top then i leave a little bit of space and then i add one more set i know my bow is gonna be next so I'll leave a little bit of space and do two more little bit of space and another set right there at the bottom. So the way I have it here is only four sets of leaves. 
I think this is cute. I like the way it looks, so I'm gonna take out my hot glue and I'm gonna glue everything down. Oh, and since there's a hole over there from the shrink, I decide to add a dot of glue and cover it. Today we will be making a double bow and I decided to go for just one type of ribbon this time. So I cut one piece of ribbon 12 inches and three pieces 24 inches long. Before we proceed, let's prepare the ends. We're gonna have two tails, one short one, and one long one. And the way I do it, I fold the ribbon in half and then one more time in half alongside and cut the ribbon at an angle, creating fish tails on both ends at the same time. And now we are going to make two simple bow ties. And I am just measuring to make sure that the loops are five inches. The loops need to be exact same size. We pinch it in the middle Make sure it's five and we tie it with a floral wire, just like so. So this is a bow tie. With the remaining wire, we're gonna attach the first tails, just like so. Cute little bow. Now let's make a second. And just the same way. Pinch it in the middle and make sure that the loops are five inches. And even. <laughs> we pinch it in the middle. And let's stack it up on top of the other bow using the same wire that's already there. Now let's attach the second tails. Just pinch it a little bit in the middle and attach it right there. And this is how we make a double bow. Now we just have to fluff it up a little bit, bend the tails, and this is as simple as it gets, guys. And now let's attach that bow to the reef. All right, and now the fun part of attaching the fruits. And I decide to first go with the leaves. So let's just attach the fruits where the leaves are. And some of them come in sets of two, some in one. So right here where it's visible, I like to have three. Sometimes you have to hold it for a minute until the glue hardens. So cute, isn't it? <laughs> and now let's add some over here by the second set of leaves. I just love the contrast of the red uh, with the green. So cute. And some of these pomegranates are darker than others. So please pay attention to that too. It's good to have a variety, I think. Of course, you can bend them, 
twist them a little bit, make them go in all directions as you like. I think the leaves would look cute here on the side. There's a reef under there, as you guys remember, so it's easy to attach there too. So once you fill in all the spots where the leaves are, now you can continue adding, you know, and just make sure that the fruits are visible, you know, from every side. And I'm going to add some right here by the bow. I am just having so much fun over here. <laughs> I still have some fruits left, so I just keep adding them. Coming out so beautiful and now let's add some of those beautiful green hubs. I think three at the bottom here will look good. I am loving this reef so much and I just want to attach a little bit raffia there. So let me show you how to quickly and easily create raffia bows. So we fold it over and create one loop and then fold it over one more time and get a second loop. And all we have to do is tie it in the middle with a piece of floral wire. And that's it. That's how we get a cute little raffia bow. All we have to do is just fluff up the loops right there. And cut the ends even. How easy and adorable is that, guys?
So these are little cherries on the top, don't you think, guys? They just add a little bit of that farm charm. <laughs> oh, farm charm. I love you. See, it rhymes. Perfect cherry. I think they look good over there. I'm gonna attach them with the remaining floral wire from the back. When you are done, put your wreath on the door and look around and see if anything's missing. For me, look like it needed some more over here behind the bow. So that's what I'm doing, just adding some greenery and I have still fruits left, so I'm gonna attach some fruits too. Just like so. So that's what you guys have to do. Make sure your wreath looks nice all around. And here's the look at the finished Farm Fresh Apple Wreath. I am just loving this so much. Reminds me of the special times that I took my children apple picking. And... Um, as much as I love the summer, I cannot wait for this season now. It's so exciting. And I am wondering about you guys. Can you relate? Have you ever been apple picking? And also, what is your favorite type of apple? Do you prefer red or green ones? When I think of apple picking, I also think about bushel baskets. And we can make one very easily. All we need is burner covers from Dollar Tree and those wooden clothespins and anything you like to decorate it with. I want to add the You Pick Apple sign to my bushel, so that's why I made a printout on the computer. I have some popsicle sticks and some black cardboard paper. And of course, chalk pens. Don't mind my bacon band-aid, guys. <laughs> I have a boo-boo. As you know, I had a burn myself with some hot glue last time. And uh, now Coco scratched it, so I had to cover it up. So when you get the burner covers, you get two for a dollar. This time, I'm going to be using the smaller one. And all we're going to be doing is attaching clothespins all around. Um, except we want it to stay nicely together, so we're gonna use a dot of hot glue under each clothespin. So this is such a fun, relaxing project, guys. And just so you know, this is how much one pack of clothespins covers. So you're gonna need a pack and a half for the smaller basket. And we are almost done. One and one more. Ta-da! Look at that little basket. Doesn't it remind you of the bushel baskets? I love it so much. So adorable. And now let's make a little chalkboard sign. And you had seen me do these before. For example, in the farmhouse signs uh, video, uh, we are covering the back of the printout with the chalk. Next, we are putting the printout on the top of the chalkboard, exactly where we want the wording to go. Secure it with some tape so it doesn't move for you. And then trace the letters with a pencil. When you lift it up, words appear like magic. <laughs> So cute. And now you can just touch it up with your chalk pen. If you like, of course. It, you don't have to because it actually came out very nice here.
And now let's make a quick little border for our sign using popsicle sticks and some hot glue. At the end, I decide to cut off the round little edges there. And then one more stick at the bottom, so it becomes like a stand for our side. We are done. I just want to decorate my bushel a little bit. Again, this is personal preference. Really doesn't have to be decorated, but I have these red sunflowers from Dollar Tree. I have some green grass, and these are real Macintosh apples. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do here, I decide to attach some floral um, foam at the bottom, just in the corner over there. Well. I don't know if there's a corner in the round <laughs> container, but <laughs> you know what I mean, right there on the side, and put the sign in. I think this is so cute, but uh, you guys, if you don't want to add flowers to your bushel, you really can just attach the sign on the side of the basket and uh, you're going to be done there. Uh, but if you like, this is what we're going to do. So I'm adding some grass to cover the floral foam and also so the apples are raised up and you can see them. Another good thing to put in here would be Spanish moss. I can't believe it, I don't have it. I always buy so much. I guess I used it up last time. Uh, but I think the gra grass is okay too. What do you think? I think it's good. What a mess I made. <laughs> and now I'm just putting the apples in. And we always have apples in our house, so that's why I don't even bother buying fake apples. But again, this is your personal preference, guys. Whatever works in your home. Something is missing for me here. I have some haps left from the reef, so I'm going to add them here. Definitely touch of green helps. Also couple apple leaves on the side. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Cute? I think that's better. And then I'm gonna tie a ribbon around the basket. I think raffia also would be cute. Whatever works for you guys. Just add some hot glue in a few spots to prevent sliding, okay? 
And then I also made a simple bow and I'm gonna hot glue it on the side as well. And here's the look at the final arrangement. What do you think? Do you guys like it? Look how beautiful it looks outside by the tree. Oh my goodness, I love it. And here I pulled out two sunflowers and the left one. I think I like it better. Less is more in this case for me. Uh, but again, play with the arrangement. It's all personal preference. And here I have one more quick idea for you with the wire basket from Dollar Tree and some of the uh, dry hydrangeas from my garden. You can get those in a Dollar Tree as well. And some green Granny Smith apples. And here I'm going to thread my favorite checker ribbon all the way around the basket. I try to do it more or less evenly. <laughs> And tell me, my friends, if you have enough of the checkered ribbon. I know I use it a lot, but it goes with my decor. I'm obsessed with it. But if anything, just type enough and I'm going to stop using it, okay? Uh, so here I am tying double knot and cutting the ends at an angle. And now I am just adding my green apples in. And I'm loving this simple look. Couple leaves. And there we go. Simple, adorable arrangement. Of course, green hydrangea is gonna look beautiful with it. And you had seen me arrange these before. I remove all the leaves because they don't dry nicely, but the flower look will look just as beautiful. Since these are very top heavy, I arrange them on the top of my hand to create like a ball shape, just like so. And then just tape it around with a floral tape or even a scotch tape, whatever you have. And here I decide to use my uh, message board from Dollar Tree. And do you guys like all green arrangement? Or just a little touch of red is nice? I think it is. <laughs> and then I tie a small piece of ribbon to the neck of the vase for a cohesive look. How do you like it? Can you smell those fresh apples? <laughs> and here I have those mini pomegranates. I'm just gonna add them here and there. Is this stinking cute or what, guys? One dollar basket, that's all it takes. And look at that. It even coordinates beautifully with that glass sign I made last time. Another cute idea is just putting your apples in a tray with the message boards. Also cute, right? I think a big touch are those green leaves. All right, my besties, thank you so much for watching. I hope I inspired you a little bit to decorate with apples. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.